So this is a quick review of the AWS 1900 USB 3 wireless internet adapter from Alpha Networks. It supports 802.11ac, A, and G, and B. And being USB 3 means it can transfer at the higher speeds. Uh, it is backwards compatible and it will work in a USB 2.0, but USB 2.0 or even 1.3, which I don't even have one to test because that's so old, uh, you're gonna be limited because of the transfer speed. So you really want this to be plugged into a USB 3.0 to get the full speed if you're connecting at a wireless at that higher speed. So let's unbox it. Now I've already taken the plastic out because I've already tested the device and I, you know, the plastic that it came in kept all these little nice shiny and fingerprint free until I touched them. Uh, so that's been removed as not an official unboxing. And I don't know that that's the most relevant part of this. Uh, it's generic boxing to me, you know, your standard cardboard setup. But let's talk about the device itself. So it is USB 3, has the USB 3 style hookup in there comes with a really nice USB 3 cable. It's actually pretty heavy duty, which it's not like a thin, cheap feeling one. I thought that was a nice include there. Now, this is neat. There are feet on the bottom, but then if you say, hey, I wanna hang it out the window of my car for some good old fashioned war driving, you can snap this little piece in, which actually is a little bit difficult to snap in. Just gotta take some effort to push it. Urgh. But once it clicks, eventually, if you, put some effort. I'm afraid I'm going to break it one of these times. There you go. Same with taking it out. I don't, this doesn't feel like, maybe it will hold up. I don't know. Um, but then you have a suction cup and you can then stick it to something and we'll stick it to the plastic here. And then it holds with the suction cup. So I think that's kind of cool. So if you're into uh, war driving back in the day, which was always fun, if you're not familiar with it, Google it. Um, you'd be able to go do this and hang it in the window of your car and drive around. Pull that off there. <laughs> Uh, we also have a clip right here that you can slip in and then you can clip it to something and hold it on there too. So if you don't want it just sitting on your desk, it's got this. The downside is once this little backing is on here, once you have the back piece, you uh, it doesn't really sit level, it'll slide around. So we're gonna go ahead and take it back off because I'm just gonna use it sitting on the table here. Here's that heavy duty, really thicker USB 3 cable uh, with the blue end to signify USB 3 and then the micro USB 3 end on this, snaps right in. Not a proprietary cable or anything weird, but does work. Uh, so put the antennas on, give you an idea what this thing looks like. So once you have the device all hooked up with the antennas, it looks pretty cool. The antennas are the standard connectors that I've seen on most Wi-Fi. I didn't measure them to confirm, but they fit the other antennas I have laying around, so they're standard screw type. I know there's a type or a name to that that I don't know for that type of fitting, but they're locking in place, so they have like a lock in the 45 and 90 degree angles. So pretty, pretty easy to adjust them, move them around, and try and figure out where the optimal signal is when you want to do this. And like I said before, when you clip it on the back here, you can use it in your car like this uh, and be able to, you know, maybe do some more driving. But uh, so far it's worked really well, and now we're gonna jump into showing it in action because that's what really matters. Now you've got the physical part taken a look at, so you get an idea, not that it's really complicated. That's why I said it's a short part of the video is this. Let's talk about functionality with it. Now let's talk about operating system support. I'm running this on Linux. Yes, it works, but let's talk about how it works. So they do have support for Windows, XP, Vista, 789, 810, 3264, Mac OS, and Linux. Now, the one thing about the Windows support is I didn't test it on anything other than Windows 10 because it's current, but the drivers are available on the CD for some of the older versions of Windows. I'm just not gonna waste my time testing it. Uh, so that's up to you. But for the Linux support, if that's what you're here looking for, here is the instructions and I'll leave a link in the comments below, really easy. So it did not work out of the box with my Pop OS that I'm running right here in 2018, uh, but it did work really easily by copying and downloading the driver right from GitHub and following these simple instructions to do a build of the driver. So pretty straightforward just to run the build on your computer and load the driver from here. So, and it's kept up to date. There's actually been some updates. Some of the pieces of the driver are older, uh, but as long as 10 months ago, they've added 
more features to it. Uh, the driver works perfectly fine, no real issues, took only a few seconds to do. But I guess it's important to know that if you're using this and your only internet connection is through wireless, that you will have to either get this offline or copy it from another computer. So if you don't have a hard line to do this, that's something to think about. Now let's talk about the performance. So here I have a Debian system and I've already done some testing with it and I'm just going to do it again. Here is my computer showing this connected. This is how the adapter shows up as a uh, WLX0CC so on so on. Uh, it's connected to my network. It's connected at 5.8 gigahertz, bit rate of 1.3. So I've got full connection, uh, signal level 100, link quality 100. It's as connected as it can be and we'll go ahead and run the speed test with iPerf. And I know it's not the most scientific tool here, but it kind of gets you an idea that roughly I'm seeing gigabit speeds here. Not bad for wireless. And this is going to vary with the different adapters that you have, but for the most part, um, it's working quite fast. So I'm going to show you the same test on the same network hardware. So we're seeing like 934. We'll run it again. And it's in my office. There's some distance. And as I've talked about before with Wi-Fi, there is interference issues that you can get with this. So 936 that time, but you can see this is pretty much gigabit transfer speeds. And if we go ahead and, and take it and do it locally to my hardwired address. My hardware address is only slightly faster. So getting a consistent 941 versus some of the variation we've seen in the other one. So we had a 937, we can see it's not that different than it was from the wireless to wired. So it's really fast, it's connected fine. Now the most impressive piece about this is all the neighbors I learned I had and Wi-Fi sitting in my office. So I'm not even outside or anything. This antenna is like, I don't know, just out of camera range here. And I can see Lowe's and probably connect to it. I, maybe I should see if I can connect to the Lowe's Wi-Fi here. Uh, and let me give you a quick overview. So this is my building right here, and this is the Lowe's home improvement behind us. So I'm going through a brick building and uh, roughly 200 feet away, and I'm able to get the Lowe's Wi-Fi. And I don't know where their Wi-Fi is in the building. This is their warehousing area. This is their retail space area. So a guesstimate to the building is 167 feet, but to where the actual retail space is, maybe they have a Wi-Fi and this is that covered area here, but that's a few hundred feet away through uh, drywall, through brick walls, and still able to uh, see the signal for the Lowe's Wi-Fi at 87%. So <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with just how well I can see the Lowe's uh, with this. So it's impressive and it's crazy. None of my other Wi-Fi's see all of these. Like my laptop doesn't see, but a couple things. Plugging this in, you see everything. So it's definitely interesting. Uh, there's some apartments by me, and I'm assuming that is where some of these other ones are, including some of the hidden SSIDs and everything else. Of course, it sees ours uh, much better because it's inside the building. But uh, it's impressive. It's a great little device. It's only about 60 bucks right now on Amazon for US dollars. So I find it to be a great value, a great buy. Uh, it works really really fast for all the testing I've done with it. And it's what I'm going to be using. And I'll be referring back to this, of course, when people say, hey, how are you testing the Wi-Fi? I'm going to be say, hey, with the Alpha Networks device. So uh, I definitely like it. If you want to buy it, links below. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.